the church everywhere. Um, as uh, more and more churches worldwide are stopping to meet physically and turn to online meeting, we are becoming more and more uh, isolated. And we may wonder uh, what will happen with the church, with Lighthouse or with the church in general. How are we uh, as a church going to continue to be the church? How is the church going to go through such a crisis? Uh, so I have an encouragement uh, for you this morning. As most people will normally associate the word church with a building. Uh, Paul opens his letter to the Corinthians, reminding us uh, we are the church of the living God. That is who we are. And the, the scripture we read from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and the opening of the letter on the, my slide to, uh, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, uh, and called to be saints, or are called saints, with all those in every place who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. So Paul, in his opening statement to the letter of Corinthians, uh, gives us a call, a reminder of our identity. We are the church of the living God. This is who we are. And even if we are isolated, we are still the church of the living God. Uh, in our families, at work, wherever the followers of Christ are, we continue to be the church. We continue to be a community of faith. We continue to share faith together. And uh, Paul is describing the church as God sees it. So it is important for us to, to realize that, to see the community. In this text, it says that uh, we are being sanctified and we are called saints. Uh, we are called by God to be his own holy people. It is like a personal invitation. I'm calling you. I'm, I, I'm calling you by name. This is how I see you. The word sanctify and saints uh, in the same text is like uh, emphasizing the same idea or purpose uh, or identity. And it says, and we are going to, I'm going to develop this theme a little bit more this morning, with all those in every place who are called, by, who are ca calling the name of Jesus Christ, with all those in every place who call the name of Jesus Christ. This morning, I want to rediscover our identity as a church by looking at Ezekiel 16. Like uh, God is going to use an allegory to uh, show us how he sees us and what he's willing to do for us. So in uh, Ezekiel chapter 16, for those of you uh, who have uh, access to phone or uh, scriptures uh, with you or a Bible, uh, we will read about the allegory of a young girl that is rescued at birth by God. God is using this allegory to show his love, to, to show his care. And it, it is a picture of the birth of the community of the people of God, which we are part of being the church uh, today. In uh, verse uh, 7, God, okay, let me just go back here. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 4 to 6. When you were born, no one cut your umbilical cord or washed you or wrapped you in cloths. When you were born, no one loved you. You were thrown out in an open field. Then I passed by and saw you squirming in your own blood, but I wouldn't let you die. So God sees this little baby girl and uh, he's picking her up and he sees the misery that she is in and he says, I'm not letting you die. God cares, God loves. So we can see that in the, the, in the PowerPoint. Let's go to the next uh, one. I made you grow like a healthy plant. You grew strong and tall and became a young woman. Your breasts were well formed and your hair had grown, but you were naked. Then I passed by and saw you squirming in your own blood, but I wouldn't let 
you die. Amen. God is so good. God is so good. As I passed by again, I saw that the time had come for you to fall in love. I covered your naked body with my coat and promised to love you. Yes, I made a marriage covenant with you and you became mine. This is what the sovereign Lord says. God took care of, of her. She became a beautiful young woman, but she needed more attention. Um, she was still naked and needed to, to be uh, attended to. And God took her to be his wife. And it reminds us, God's people, of our origin, starting from the condition of her birth, her growth, and how he loved her, and how he, he desired her, and he took her to be his wife. And this is what God is doing with, with us. As I passed again, I saw that the time had come for you to fall in love. And then I made a marriage covenant. You became mine. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Isn't it encouraging for us today to realize that? And then as we continue, God says how he's going to treat her. Uh, Ezekiel 16, 10 to 12, I dressed you in embroidered gowns and gave you shoes of the best leather, a linen headband and a silk clock. I put jewels on you, bracelets and necklaces. I gave you a nose ring and earrings and a beautiful crown to wear. So God treated her with honor. He was so generous. He invested the best so that she would be the most beautiful, that she wore the best clothes, she could wear the most valuable jewels and ate the best food. And it, it's wonderful to realize that. And then we, we see how it develops. And your beauty was dazzling. And you became a queen. And so this way God reveals to us the reason of her beauty. You had ornaments and gold and silver, and you always wore clothes and brought them and silk. You ate bread made from the best flour, had honey and olive oil to eat. Your beauty was dazzling and you became a queen. You became famous in every nation for the, your perfect beauty because I was the one who made you so lovely. That is what the sovereign Lord says oh wow i was so blessed when i read that that uh, uh, allegory of of god's love uh, this morning this is so beautiful your beauty was dazzling you became a queen and god gives us the reason of her beauty i made you i was the one who made you so lovely and this will remain the same thing uh in our life uh, all along um we are the church God found us in our misery. He took care of us. He, uh, he made us grow. He provided the best. He invested in us. He gave us his son. He is preparing us for a glorious future. And God says, I was the one who made you so lovely. This is who we are, the church. So let's not get discouraged by the hard time in which we live. Okay, so in the New Testament, we find another bride, beautiful bride. In Ephesians chapter 5, uh, Christ uh, loves the church. He, pre he prepares her. He sanctifies her. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 and 27. Husbands, love your wife just as Christ loved the church and gave his life for it. He did this to dedicate the church to God by his word after making it clean by washing it in water in order to present the church to himself in all its beauty, pure and faultless, without spot or wrinkle or any imperfection. So we find this beautiful, another allegory, another comparison. Christ, the husband, the church, the bride, and how Jesus sacrifice himself and he loves. He prepares her. He sanctifies her because she is not fit by nature, by our human nature, by our sinful nature. So he has to wash away 
uh, as a theologian put it, he washes away the swinish nature of his saints. So the swinish is not a really nice uh, expression, like the, the dirty nature, the, the sinful, the ugly. Uh, so that he might present her to himself a glorious church. This means that Jesus shares with us his purpose, his goal with us, what he wants what he wants to do. That's, that is wonderful. He's describing her beauty without spot or wrinkle or any such things. This is the language, the superb language that the Holy Spirit is using to describe the beauty of the church, leading to the glorious state in which she will be. Without spot, without dirt, without wrinkle, without any such things. When Christ will present the church to himself, any eye scrutinizing and examining the bride will not find a single blemish, not a spot or anything, because Christ died for the, for the, for the church and we have been made pure. We have been prepared. So in the next uh, slide, I'm going to uh, read two texts, and I'm coming close to my conclusion this morning, talking about us, the church, at this moment. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2, the text that I started with. To the church, Paul is writing, to the church of God, uh, that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified, in Christ, Jesus, and called to be saints, with all those in every place who are called on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Let's start with this one. This is a, a wonderful description. The church in Corinth. The church in Corinth. It's like the church in Hong Kong. It's like Lighthouse. It's like the vine, it's like ECC, it's like the local church, the local churches and the locations. There is a church, there are many communities, many homes in Corinth that form the church of Corinth. That we know that there is a city, a place, and there is a church group, a church community living there. So there's a local church there that is formed of many people. But then it goes on a bit further. I want to draw your attention to the expression, with all those in every place. Oh, this is so wonderful. The, the with all in every place means in all manners of type of locations. In any manner of types of location. It may be the elevation, the district where it is. It may be a mountain village like the church in Bongabong and the Philippines and Iloilo. It may be a tribal group in Burma. I was reading a friend who, is, who studied in the Philippines, the theology is back pastoring in the camps of certain tribal people. Uh, who have been uh, in camps and refugee camps for years. They are now maybe the second and even third generation of them in these camps. And he says, now with the, the, the COVID-19, we are used to be in refugee camps. So we are praying for all people all over the world. So regardless of whatever manner of location where they are, it could be uh, a high rise, in uh, Hong Kong, you may be on the 40th floor, your apartment. Uh, churches are in a commercial building. We are on the fourth floor and the second floor. I rise in Hong Kong. It could be a farm in Australia. It could be a church building in Ouagadougou. It can be in a home. It can be a location at work. All manners of conditions also. It could be poor or rich or middle class, it doesn't matter. Because in this text, we are so encouraged that says, with all those in every place and every locations and every conditions, 
who call on the name of Jesus Christ. This is our identity. This is who we are. We need to, to see the church outside of the building, and especially now. This is like such a strong reminder. We have kind of no choice but to do that this morning. This is wonderful. The common denominator that we have is regardless of whatever manner of locations and conditions, we call on the name of the Lord Jesus. Do you call on the name of the Lord Jesus this morning? If you do call on the name of Jesus, you are is. You are part of the church. So that is wonderful truth, I think. And remember the every place, the, the all manners of locations. That is very important. Uh, let me go to uh, the, the locations. Uh, Amy, help me to go to the little map, the, the, the church everywhere with, where you see the, the buildings and everything in the background. How did the church will remain the beautiful bride through many and various global crises. Everywhere there is a church. Can we go to the next slide if you can? Yes, that's the one I want to see. The church everywhere. Look at uh, this, this little map. It's so funny, but it's so good. Here, 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 here. As we are going to move online, as we are going to have church everywhere online, if you are on the second floor, if you are in a high rise, if you are at the office, if you are in your car, if you are in a bus, if you are in a store, if you walk in the, on the park, if you are on the street, you are the church everywhere. You can access, let's say you are uh, uh, sitting in the park on lunchtime, from, not far from your office if you're still working uh, in the office. And then uh, you read on WhatsApp or on Facebook that in uh, 10 minutes or at 12.30 or uh, 12.45, Pastor Jennifer is going to give you a devotion. Okay, so church everywhere, connect, go. Let's see that uh, some of you, a Friday night group, Wednesday night group, or any new group that you would want to start with some friends, ladies groups, men's groups, you want to start a group and says, okay, Thursday night. Let's meet at 7 o'clock through Zoom. Church everywhere online. So that is very, very important what we are going to do. Right from the early age, church age, do you realize that the church went through the inhuman Roman persecutions? You know, when we, you hear the words catacombs of Rome, the church went through these inhuman persecutions. How did... Uh, they not only survive, but how did they continue to communicate? How did they stay connected? How, how, when they had to go underground in a way of speaking? So today, it's not the first time that the church is facing that. You know, through the ages, the church has passed through adversities of all sorts, persecutions, but also wars and epidemics and pandemics. And, uh, and each generation, the church stood. We are still the church today. So we are going to go through this crisis by God's grace. We are still going to be the church that God has called us to, to be, a lighthouse. We are going to communicate the message of love and the truth of the scriptures as to more ways. We will be even more creative. It will force us to come out of our rut and think of church only on Sunday morning and, and, and a building. But we are going to develop ways, new things, new ways to communicate. And we will show the beauty of the church of Jesus Christ in a time such as this. So that's my encouragement for you. This is, this is a wonderful message. Uh, if we go back to the, the slide in Mark chapter 16, verse 18, and I'm going to uh, finish with that. I, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. Hey, that is such a wonderful statement. My church, I will build my church. Oh, what a relief. Uh, it's not mine. 
uh, it's not yours only. Uh, what's happening in this world, it's not outside of the control of the Lord Jesus. It belongs to the King of Kings, the Supreme Ruler, the Almighty God. He says, I will build. He is the, the architect and the builder. Through the centuries, he has been building. And if we are in his church today, you are in his church today, I am in his church today, it's because he's still building. He's still building you, he's still building me, and he placed you and he's placing me uh, in it, in the church. Uh, then we talk about the foundation of that church. It is based on uh, the fact that Jesus had the, asked a question, who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And then Jesus said, Peter, you are blessed. This realization, what you just came out of your mouth, did, of your mouth didn't come out of you, but it came out of a revelation of my heavenly father. And you are right. And y your name is a little stone, but upon the rock of the confession of your faith, that I am the foundation of the faith, I will build my church. Also, we see in this text, my church as opposed to the gates of the enemy, the Hades, uh, whatever the, the, the gates of Hades symbolizes the organized power of death and Satan. Jesus is the one who holds the key. He holds our future. He is and remain our assurance of our life. We have eternal life. And we read that this uh, church is impregnable because Jesus says so. And the gates of Hades will not overpower it, will not prevail. The church is going to continue as long as the church, as Jesus Christ, is going to lead his church. He conquered death and the power of the enemy by his death and his resurrections, and he will continue to defend it. We are the church everywhere, and we are going to continue to prevail because Jesus is the one making us prevail. Amen? Can we pray in closing this morning? Father, you are God, our God our provider, the source of our of help, the, the ruler of this world. We live under your authority. Jesus, you said that when we are in the hand of our loving, powerful God, no one can snatch us out. Paul said it differently. We have been transported. We have been set free from the kingdom that kept us in bondage. We have been transferred into the kingdom of the son he loves. We are safe. We are secure in his hand. We might be isolated in some ways, but we can pray. We can read, listen to the word of God. We can communicate. We have to stay connected together. Lord, help us to remain your church together, Lord this community of believers that you are building, Lord. And help us to reach out beyond our wall. And even at a time such as this, we may even see good news and growth in the kingdom of God, oh Lord. Thank you for dying on the cross for us. Thank you for calling us, giving us a new identity. You are call calling us saint. You are sanctifying us. And one of the way you are doing it, you are using this crisis. As in every generation, you have used various crises to, to purify us and to bring us closer to you, to make us sense and feel how much we need you so much more, always. Sometimes we have felt so independent and so, so okay on our own. And we have to repent of that because we live by your grace and your power. Lord, bless Lighthouse Church and everywhere they are in their home, Lord. Keep us safe. Bless all the churches 
in Hong Kong, oh, we pray, oh Lord, all brothers and our sisters who are calling on the name of the Lord. Oh Lord, protect Hong Kong, the citizens, lead the government leaders and help us to be a positive influence in our society, Lord, oh God. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Oh God, we are going to pay attention to you. We're going to listen to your voice. We're going to be attentive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God. Thank you, Lord. Amen.